Hey James, Coach Maddox here. Just going over a few of your video clips from this weekend to make sure uh, we, you have some key points to continue to work on to, to give you a competitive advantage over your competition. First thing we're going to look at here is your pre-pass position. You'll see how you're standing in a position where your knees are locked out. Now as quarterbacks, we want to be tall in the pocket, but we want to be tall from the waist up. And so what you see here is you're tall from the waist up, but your legs are locked out. So what we'd like to see is you to load your legs just slightly outside your shoulders. That forces your knees to bend and it reduces the distance you have to stride out. So it makes you get your hallway set faster. And anything that we can do faster and eliminate waste in motion is going to make us more efficient here. So that's the first thing we want to make sure we do is just widen your base, uh, similar to what Drew Brees does in the pocket, um, bending the knees, and that shortens the stride length that we'll need to take in order to get the foundation of the throw set. So next thing we'll look at here is the timing of the throw. And the timing of the throw is probably the most important thing here, James, in terms of, of being an efficient quarterback. The power works from the ground up. So what that means is, is we need to get that front foot uh, as you stride out into the ground as fast as possible. And we want to make sure that knee is bent in a 90 degree shin angle with the ground there. So you see that your shin angle is slightly at an angle so that means it's going to be a little bit harder to stand up and get all your power onto that front leg. And so <clears throat> on our deeper throws, that's where that will be an issue. So the idea here is not to separate our hands from the ball until the foundation is built. And this would be that point. So what you did here is you separated your hands at the same time that you built the foundation. So what that means is, is the roof is being built at the same time as the base. And just like building a house, if we build the roof and the base at the same time, the house will fall at that point. Just like your arm and your chest it will tilt and fall down without any support. So the goal here is to set the foundation when the front foot almost hits the hallway. That's when you want to separate your hands from the ball there. And so your hands would just now be coming off the ball if we were doing it properly. So just going back here... <clears throat> We want the front foot to hit the hallway, then we separate. Now you'll see here, since you separated early, what's going to happen is, is your arm is not going to have time to fold and maximize your compression. So you're doing a good job here of getting your elbow above the shoulder line, getting to that lead position that we want the elbow to be in. <clears throat> but what you're sacrificing here is you're sacrificing compression of the arm. So we'd like to see more of a fold there so you can load your tricep and get all the power from your legs and put it through the tricep up and out to the target. And since you separated early, your arm's going to be in a position to fire before your legs can stand up fully into that. So you'll see the ball's off the hand, and you still have bend in the knee. So what that means is you're just, you're just losing power. You're leaving it on the table, which is okay for some throws, but the goal here is to, to get you where you can throw with as much straight line velocity as possible so you know how much power you have. It's a lot easier to, to pull back than it is to just let it all go. So the goal here would be to get that timing of the throw down better where that foot hits the hallway, then you separate, so you have time to fold that arm and compress that tricep more, and then you can feel yourself stand up at the same time as you extend. So when you extend your arm out to the target, you should be locking that front leg out at the same time. So we just want you to do a better job here of connecting your legs to the firing in the, of the throw of the arm. <clears throat> Once you get that down, you're going to feel a lot more effortless power into your distance throws. Okay, as the ball comes off the hand, you'll see the wrist, it will pronate down, but then you kind of supinate the wrist. That means the wrist is going to come from an outside in motion. And that just means you're not getting all of the finger surface and the power through the ball. We'd like to see the wrist pronate down, and then as you turn, it turns inside out, not outside in. Last thing we'll look at here is just the finish of the throw. You'll see when you finish, you finish uh, slightly tilt and the feet are square and we talked about we want that right foot to turn into the left leg so that will force you to turn your body and that will help you stay more upright the power is in the turn anytime you tilt power will spill out a lot of points there uh, hopefully that helps a little bit I'm going to send you a few more videos here that will highlight a few more key things but uh, if you have any other questions just shoot me an email and then send me any other clips you'd like thanks
All right, James, this is the second video uh, that I'm going to go over here. This is uh, one that was after the first one I showed you. And what I want to highlight here is as you go to the L position and you compress to the lead position here, you do a much better job of your extension with your wrist pronated down. Great job with your extension with your wrist pronated. That means that you've gotten all of your fingers and your power through the tricep into the ball, which gives you more straight line velocity. <clears throat> and you do a really good job here of turning and see how the wrist turns inside out. We're seeing the, the palm of your hand, not the back of your hand. And so that's more what we want to see consistently there so you get a better uh, and more consistent release and control of the ball. All right, this is the third video we're going to go over. Another key uh, power drain issue in a lot of quarterbacks is that when they stride out, as you'll see here with your power foot, your left foot, is that you will step on your midline. And so what that means is, is the back foot <clears throat> is your hallway foot. And off the back foot, you've got an 18-inch hallway that's coming out. And that's basically should be lined up with where your receiver is or where your throw is. So we have a midline point of your back foot that's splitting that 18-inch hallway into two 9-inch halves. The goal here for us, James, would be to drive out and step in the left nine of the hallway. If we step on the midline like you see here, what's going to happen is your hips will lock and you will not be able to fully turn and get your legs through up into your core and into the arm. As you see here is when the foot hits the ground, as you come through on the throw, your back hip <clears throat> will stop square and your upper body will start to tilt as a result of you not being able to fully turn. So there's two T's that I want you to remember. We want to turn instead of tilt. And the tilt is usually a result of stepping on the midline. By tilting, that will cause the arm to slash across our body like you see here. And that will just drain power and force the ball to travel out of the hallway right to left instead of down the hallway like we want consistently as quarterbacks. So you see how your right foot will stop square and that's one of the main things we worked on in our training, if you remember, of being able to turn that right leg all the way through into the left. And by turning, that keeps your core straight and your spine straight, which drives all the power through that arm. So just a small, just six-inch step, just six inches over off the back heel will be all it takes there to get that turn and to get that power more consistent in the hallway. Okay, James, this is a fourth video, and this one we're throwing the field comeback. Anytime we throw a comeback, we want as much straight line velocity. It's, it's, it's a throw where we need all of our power into the ball. In order to maximize our power into the ball, we want to make sure we turn and stand up into our extension instead of tilt and pull down. And so that turn and that standing up on that front leg is going to be made possible only by the timing of the throw properly. And the timing of the throw properly, the kinetic chain of the throw, will be in sync only if we build the foundation first, like you see here. We will get that front foot in the ground first, and then we separate. If we separate early, like you're doing, as you see as you're taking your hands off the ball at the same time, we're building the roof of the throw at the same time as the foundation. And if we do that, what will incur is a tilt, of our upper body like you see here your your upper body is becoming unplugged from your core here you're plugged in you're perfect you want to be plugged into your legs you're straight your spine angle straight up and down but that spine angle will break and you will tilt because of the early separation because you're not able to stand up and turn on that front leg so at this point of the throw since you start to tilt your arm will pull down to make up for the lack of power that you're not getting from the turn and the standing up and you see the nose of your ball is going to hang on this comeback and it will actually go out of frame and sell. What you want to do is when you throw is you want to check your work on these straight line velocity throws and if your feet finish square to the target and you feel yourself falling over like you see here that means you're not getting all your power into the football. You want to stay perfectly behind this shin angle right here. Nothing will cross, should cross this line in the sand of the shin angle. Stand up and turn and bring that back leg through, and you're going to be much more efficient. You're close. You're on your way. You did a great job. Uh, continue to work on that turn and standing up behind that front leg, 
and we're going to get maximum power with less effort. Okay, this is where we're throwing the deep post. This is the fifth video clip we're going to cover here. And so this is a, a towards the end of the workout, and you're, we're starting to see some improvement at this point. You're doing a little bit better job of hanging onto the ball longer. Great job getting the shin angle in the ground. Great foundation, not stepping on the midline. So we're seeing some improvements there. As you come through and you stand up you, into the extension of the throw, you're doing a great job at this point. One of the things I want to highlight here is still the supination of the wrist. You'll watch when you, the ball comes off the hand, you're turning that wrist over and pronating it. That's what we want. Supination occurs is when we turn the wrist outside in. And you'll see that this is actually going to drain power and force the nose of that ball to hang. We want that, that nose of that ball to be straight. And so instead of supinating, we want to pronate the wrist down like you're doing. But then as we turn and with the hand drops, we should make sure we turn the wrist inside out to protect the arm and also main, keep that nose in that straight line position. Okay, James, this is the last video here. This is the last throw of the day. And you remember the, the post you threw before you overthrew your receiver because of that supination, that outside-in motion of the wrist. Here, as you come through and you extend, you'll notice that you do a great job of extending. Another thing you're doing a great job is you're locking the front leg out as you extend, so the timing of your throw is much better. You did an outstanding job of really uh, making those changes that we really focused on and timing out standing up as you extend, so that just shows you're getting all the power into the ball. You're doing a great job of proning the wrist down, and on this clip, you'll notice, you, you if you remember, you hit, I believe it was bow in stride, and another reason why you're able to get that nose to drop down and hit him in stride is because you didn't supinate that wrist as much as you did the last one. So once again, continue to work on proning the wrist down and then turning inside out. We should see the palm of the hand as you decelerate, not the back of the hand. And that will just ensure that you're getting that nose to drop over on your deep throws or your intermediate throws over linebackers. Okay, James, this is video of Max just to use as a frame of reference here. And he's throwing the field comeback. And you'll notice here one of the things he does a good job of is he does a really good job of getting his front foot in the ground really quick, getting that foundation of the throw into the ground, and then separating. And then the main thing he's doing a good job of to maximize his efficiency here is he's doing two things. You'll see that when he gets his elbow to lead position, he's got more fold in it. So he gets more of his tricep compressed, so he generates more power in that. And then when he extends, he stands up and he extends his arm flatter through that ear tunnel. So his arm's at a lower trajectory when he's throwing those straight line throws. His yours is more up. And he's timing out the extension with the stand. The reason why he's able to stand up and not j delete power out of his throw is because you'll see his core and his legs are in connected with one another. He doesn't tilt. Why doesn't he tilt? Because he's doing the one thing that you need to continue to work on, and that's the turn. You see how he brings his back leg through and stands up as he throws. And that's the main thing, James. If you can get that down and get keep getting more consistent with that, you'll get be able to generate that straight line raw power like you see here. See the ball's on a line. There's no wasted motion, and it's got maximum velocity for that field to come back and just looks efficient, effortless, smooth power.